So, hello guys and welcome to this week's tutorial. And this I'm going to show you how to make this really cool, uh, ultra satisfying animation. I hope you guys enjoy. It's pretty complex, but we'll get through it together. So, let's get right into it and figure this one out. So, I'm going to start off with an empty blender scene. I'm going to shift A. Uh, I'm going to add in a circle. I'm going to go into the settings here. I'm going to add fill type of Angon. And I'm going to go into front view. Tap it add in mode. Extrude this bad boy up. So somewhere around here, he's pretty thick. So I'm going to inset him and then I'm going to extrude him down. And I'm going to look at him from this point of view and just bring him down like this. So we have this nice, cool looking shape. I'm just going to go into the settings. I'm going to add in a bevel modifier, increase the number of segments, decrease the strength a little bit more and add in a subdivision surface and then shade it smooth. Okay, so now we've got this nice base. I'm gonna shift it, add in another object. So I'm gonna add another circle. I'm gonna grab it up on the Z. I'm gonna tab into add mode. I'm gonna go into front view again. I'm gonna extrude him up to here. And then I'm gonna inset him also. I'm gonna extrude him down a little bit, just like that. I'm gonna inset him again. And then I'm gonna extrude this up on the Z and quite a bit, so I'm just gonna grab that up. Okay, so we've got this shape, but then I'm j I just wanna um, scale him down Shift Z from top view, just so that he's a little smaller than this object. So I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier to him, increase the number of segments, decrease the strength a little bit, something like that. Add in a subdivision surface, here we go, and shade him smooth. Okay, so now we've got our plunger and we've got this object. So I'm going to grab him up on the Z. I'm going to call this one uh, plunger and the bottom part, call it base. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab this guy up a bit. So what we're going to do now is add in a cube. So let's get a cube, control three, scale him down a bit. Add in a cast modifier. So we, why are we using a cube? Is because he has better geometry, so it's going to be more efficient to us for us to work with him. So let's press Control A and Control A. Shape this guy smooth. Grab him up on the Z. Let's see where he is here. So we don't want him to be clipping through our um, base. So let's bring him up. And yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to bring up the sponger a bit. Grab him up on the Z a little bit more and let's start just animating him. So I'm going to go to frame 20. I'm going to add in this single keyframe on where it was, go down to frame 90 and then bring him down to somewhere like around here and then insert a single keyframe. So then I'm going to bring out the graph editor. So just graph editor and then change this interpolation by pressing T down here. And you see now we have Bezier. So I'm gonna grab this node and pull it in because we want it to look like it's struggling against uh, crushing our ball when we're gonna add in soft body physics to him. And so he's gonna go really fast at the beginning and slow down as if it's struggling. So if we look at this motion, it looks something like that. And then at the end, we're gonna add in like a little pop at the bottom so we can go around five, four frames after that and then we can look here and then grab it down on the Z a little bit so somewhere around here like it pops down and moves all the way here and if we insert a single keyframe here and make it move so that at first it's grab it's slow let's see X and then I'm just gonna and now we're gonna see this pop so it goes down slowly and then just pops okay so let's add in some physics to this and then we're gonna edit the shape of this object and you're gonna see what I'm doing so let's um, add in a we're gonna go into the physics property of this ball add in the soft body take away the goal change these two to 0.6 uh, 
um, and then I'm going to add free to plasticity and free to bending and that's going to work well for us and I'm going to add in another plane on the bottom which is going to be a another circle I'm going to grab it up on the Z and we're going to use this as the, the collider so I'm just going to add in a collision uh, modifier to us and let's just close this down and uh, yeah so add another collision to this and if we see now it's doing the collision so what i'm going to do is i am going to go into the cache settings here i'm just going to increase this for now and then i'm going to see where at what frame our plunger collides with the um, the ball so that's around frame 26 so that's from where we're going to start our animation and we're going to end it at frame uh, 90. So, and then if I bake this out, we're going to see really nice crushing. So when we got this baked out, we had this really cool uh, looking animation. And okay, you see that on frame 90, it's just compressed it really nicely and it looks great. So what we're going to do now is at frame 90, we're going to add in a single keyframe for the scale. So insert a single keyframe, insert keyframe for the scale and then on the next frame we're gonna just make it zero so take this and then press zero and insert the keyframes so if we look at this now from the beginning we have this really cool animation which looks great so just to make it uh, the crushing a little nicer we're just gonna go in and add in a subdivision surface just for later just for our rendering and if we take a look at this it just looks like that which is really great so what we can do now is uh, start adding the smoke. So we're going to have it um, emitting smoke after frame 90. So you remember that plane we had that was a collision before. We are just going to delete that collision because we, we baked out our uh, simulation and we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to just going to look at it from here. So from top view, I'm going to scale it down to here and then look at it from here let's just see how it is so i'm going to scale him down a little bit more and then i'm going to tab into edit mode extrude this guy up so and let's see where our plunger goes down to so at 94 he's over here so i'm going to grab this up on the z a little bit so something like that so alt z and we have a plunger going and not intersecting that piece so what we can do now is to that circle, we're going to add in a, uh, some physics. We're going to go into object, quick effects, and add quick smoke. So let's just scale this down on the Z because we don't need it that high, something like that. And then I'm just going to grab it up to like the bottom over here. So let's add some um, physics to these two. So we're going to add in fluid effector and for plunger we're going to go fluid and effector and they're going to be our colliders so but before that i really want to do something which is um add some holes into this um plunger so what i'm going to do is shift a i'm going to add in an empty first plane axis then i'm going to add in a cylinder scale it down shift z just scale him down, just bring him up to this size, grab him on the Y, and then I'm gonna uh, add in the modifier, I'm gonna give him an array modifier, change it from relative offset to object offset, uh, object offset and select our empty. So if we select our empty, and I'm gonna press control A and apply the scale, uh, we go into the empties um, settings. I'm going to give myself a count of eight because that's how many um, holes I want. And I'm going to go into the um, empty settings and go to the rotation and change the rotation to 45 degrees, which is 360 divided by 80. And we have this. What I did wrong here is I left my origin over there. So I'm just going to press um, inside our cylinder. So I'm going to go right click set origin to 3d cursor and now we have put these in the right positions 
which is great. So we go back into a plunger and if we add another modifier, which is going to be, I'm going to take away this collision. Um, and we're going to add in another modifier, which is going to be an, uh, what's it called? A Boolean. So we're going to go into Boolean, select our objects as a cylinder and bring this up to here. We can see how this looks. So up to now, we see that there's some bad geometry, but that doesn't matter. So what we're going to, because we're just going to press control A for this control A and control A for the Boolean, leave the liquid there, delete these cylinders. We don't need them anymore and go into the settings here and go to normals and auto smooth. And now this looks perfect. So we have made nice holes in here. So this is our whole thing. So if we go into the um, circle, that was our uh, smoke emitter. So we're gonna make it smoke emitter. Um, that's what I'm gonna call it. Go into the physics settings and let's just change the, oh my God, I hate these. Uh, thing. So let's go into the density, change the density to three and initial velocity to on the Z up to three. And let's go here and we're going to give ourselves um, some noise. Um, keep that as it is. And then we're going to go add 0.2 to vorticity, adaptive domain and change this later on to all but for now i'm just going to show you it on replay so let's go back to the smoke emitter and let's animate this um inflow when it's using its inflow so at frame 90 we wanted to use flow and the frame before we want to untick this and add this keyframe so it doesn't use flow up to frame 89 and then uses flow at frame 90 and then at frame like 120 so i'm going to give myself 180 frames that's how long i want my animation so frame like 120 um 125 let's do it and i'm gonna insert a keyframe for use flow in the next frame we do not use flow so what's i gonna do is we're gonna be emitting smoke up to frame 125 and then after that we won't be emitting any more smoke so back into our domain settings we can add in one more thing which is dissolve and bring it up to like six or five depending on how long you want your smoke to stay so I'm going to bring this up to 60 and we can just start baking this in. So what I'm just going to do is go into the um, press all and just uh, bake out all my frames of smoke. So I'm going to get back to you in a second. So now that it is baked, I'm just going to give you a look of how it is and we're going to get right into shading. So yeah, that's our full smoke simulation of how it moves in pops and uh, we have our smoke coming out and it looks just great. So what we can do now is we start lighting. So first I'm just going to add in a plane, scale this guy up. I'm going to grab him down on the Z a little bit. Just yeah, like that. And I'm going to scale him up a little bit more. Tab, extrude, grab it on the Z. And then I'm going to grab him up more on the Z and then I'm Gonna add in a bevel modifier, um, increase the amount, increase the number of segments, and right click shade smooth. Okay, so let's quickly add in a camera. So I'm gonna go here, look from this angle, shift A, add in the camera, control Alt, control Alt zero, so that we can snap it to my view. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, go into item settings and just give myself zero on the X and that looks pretty beautiful to me. So, um, and after we can see that it goes down and yeah, everything is perfectly in frame. So I'm just going to insert a single keyframe on frame. Mm, yeah. Frame 20. I'm going to insert a single keyframe here, move back a little bit onto frame one. I'm going to move myself out of way. So, I'm going to scale this on the X. Uh, so I'm just going to move out of way so that when we, we're going to make this nice and looping. So insert single keyframe here and we're going to move ahead and up to frame like 150. And I'm going to add in a single keyframe here and go to frame 181. And I'm just going to move myself to the side, to the side though. 
and insert that single keyframe. So if you look at this from this point of view, we see that we have our whole simulation going through and then we go to the side after that. One second and we can see that we go to the side and just, it looks great. So I'm gonna just change the interpolation to Bezier and yeah, that makes everything look great. So let's go into shading. Uh, we're gonna be working in uh, cycles here. So because smoke looks better in cycles, you can work in Eevee, but it won't look as great. So let's just um, go to rendered mode. We're gonna go into the environment settings, change uh, and add in a sky texture, increase the altitude a little bit. So we have a little bit of bluer light and we're pretty, our scene is pretty lit up. Um, so I'm just gonna add in the shading to the bottom plane. So I'm gonna just make it nice and light pink and decrease the roughness, increase the decrease the specular a little bit. And then for the uh, base, I'm gonna just make it full metallic, decrease the roughness and decrease the color a little lower, something like that. And I'm gonna take my plunger and this, and then I'm gonna press control link and link the materials. So now they're linked. So then I'm gonna go here, um, look at this, and we see that we have our smoke emitter. I'm gonna uh, take it out from the render because we don't wanna see it. And that's pretty much it. So now for our ball, I'm gonna add a new uh, material. I'm gonna give it a nice bluey color, increase the transmission to like 0.85 and then decrease the roughness to something like this and then increase the specular. So that's a shading, really simple shading for it. And now for our domain, we select our domain and that's gonna be our smoke. And I'm just gonna copy the hex of this blue color. So go into the hex, control C, that, and go back into the domain, select this blue color and just like input this hex and then increase the density to 15 and that's it. So basically this whole thing is uh, shaded so we can see how the ball looks and we can see how our smoke looks somewhere around here. Yeah, we have our smoke look. So uh, we're ready to render this out. Just pick your file uh, place, uh, import, uh, choose the file format as FFmpeg, uh, encoding as MP4 and output quality to perceptually lossless. And I'd suggest rendering this out at around 256 if you don't use any denoising. And if you do, uh, you can use a little less. So just render out these keyframes, re re render out this video, and then you get animation that looks something like this. So yeah, that's how you make this really cool animation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you for watching this one. If you guys enjoyed my videos, maybe think of subscribing. It would be awesome. You support this channel. Thank you. And see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.